Hey everyone, I'm Flow Bike Senior Editor Ian Dilley here with our correspondent at the Vuelta a San Juan, Gregor Brown. Gregor, thanks for being with us. My pleasure, Ian. Good to see you. Today we are talking about the drama that has really taken over the Vuelta a San Juan and kind of speaks to bigger issues in professional cycling. Um, you know, the incident by Ijo Kies. Let, let's start, break this down, give some background about what exactly happened. What, what started all of this? Well, it was a, um, I think on, on Friday he went to this uh, coffee shop restaurant. They were on a training ride and uh, had a coffee, as cyclists do uh, here in San Juan. It's this western province out uh, in Argentina. So they stopped for a coffee. A woman asked them for a selfie uh, with the whole group because she saw uh, Max Riquese, who's a big thing here. He lives in Buenos Aires, an Argentine cyclist. Um, and yeah, and, and we, we all have seen the photo, so in the photo she's bending over and um, Ilio Kesa mimics a sex act behind her. And then so he explained to us in the press conference, we spoke with him a few, when it came out, he explained that he had to go to the police station and give his side of the story, and the case was closed. He paid a fine, which was around uh, 70 US dollars uh, to uh, the police, and, and, and the case was closed. And that was Monday, the race started and the whole thing surfaced and uh, Ilio went ahead and raced that time trial the next day. Yesterday we talked about the experienced rider Ilio Kessa perhaps being the right role model for young star Remco Evenepoel. That could be the case on the bike, but plenty of people will be revising their opinion as a result of Kessa's behaviour off it. And then later on that night, after the time trial, the organizer, organizer decides to kick, kick him out of the race. So it's obviously put a dark cloud over the race because, um, you know, these guys are here to bring publicity to this, this province, San Juan. Uh, they're one of the biggest teams, and he's representing a Belgian team, international team, and uh, it's not a photo you want out there. Yeah, I mean, this waitress is uh, only 18 years old, but, you know, good on her, uh, stands up for herself, reports the incident to uh, the local authorities. I mean, it, it, the photo was taken with her camera for her, so she has uh, photo <laughs> photographic evidence of uh, exactly what occurred. And it seems like the episode may have ended there with his disqualification from the race. I'd like to apologize especially to this lady. Um, I made a mistake. I realized that. Uh, this will not happen again. I also want to apologize to, to everybody. Everybody here, Argentinian people, uh, but not only them, everybody who feels offended by what I did. Uh, but then his boss of uh, De Kunic, Quick Step, comes out and comments that, you know, not only threatening to pull his team out of the race, but also insinuating that the woman who uh, made this complaint was out for money. I mean, uh, very uh, dis disrespectful and obviously a very old school mentality. This is a guy who certainly does not get it. And then what happened yesterday, we heard that the team uh, missed the podium ceremony. They complained that they weren't, or they said that they weren't feeling well. Do you see that as, as a boycott, sort of a pushback against the race organization? It, it was, and Patrick Lefebvre has already said that the team won't come to this race next year. Maybe the team won't get invited. Uh, at the time when the team was called up, they had three different riders, uh, Avero Hodeg, uh, Alaphilippe, and uh, Evan Poole, who were due up on the podium. They all had got fined overnight for missing the podium celebrations, but at the time, uh, no one really had an answer as to why they were missing the podium celebrations. Uh, it was a boycott. Lefebvre decided to do that. The riders didn't want to boycott it. The riders wanted to go up on the, on the podium and uh, celebrate the day and the race. But uh, Lefebvre from, from Belgium pulled the strings and said, look, guys, boycott this podium. Yeah, and you know, pro cycling as a whole is uh, certainly not new to sexism within the sport. You know, there's been multiple incidents of inappropriate behavior from, you know, Peter Sagan uh, pinching the bottom of a podium girl at the Tour of Flanders in 2013, which, you know, he apologized profusely for as well. Um, you know, blatantly sexist billboards put out by E3 Haralbeke. Um, you know, 2017, Pinarello put out some really tone-deaf advertisements about e-bikes. And also just reports from inside the women's professional peloton of, uh, you know, mistreatment, um, uh, allegations of abuse. And this is a recurring pattern, you know, uh, 
I do feel like the uh, governing body is trying to move past this uh, number of um, reforms, we should say, to uh, try and strengthen the equality in the sport for men and women, everything from you know equal prize money, the evolution of the women's world tour. A and then an incident like this happens. I mean, at the top of the sport, there is still a, a just a very old school mentality and yeah. um, not, not, not evolving in a lot of ways. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I mean, what you know, one of my colleagues said that you know, well, this is a very Anglo Saxon thing, everybody's up in arms, PC correct. It, it's true, you know, that you know, the Great Britain, United States, and uh, Australia, you know, these countries they, they take more of a progressive PC outlook, um, perhaps as we, we think the correct outlook. Europe's a little bit further behind, and the guys running these sports, the managers, you know, they're even from a previous generation, and even previous generations in the U.S. weren't this politically correct. Have you heard anything from the race organizers and, and kind of what they're feeling, what their perspective is? You know, the feeling is, is that the race is here to promote um, this province, and of course, a situation like this doesn't look good, and we're talking about a young girl uh, who's working here in the city of San Juan, and, you know, one of the international teams coming here, and they, they should the first thing is they should be putting on a good representation of the sport and of, of young men as well. And Ilio is one of the older guys in the team too, and he, he should be an example. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a team that has dubbed themselves uh, the Wolf Pack. Certainly seem like a bit of a, a, a boys club of yeah. professional cycling. Um, I mean, do they have that reputation within, within the professional peloton, within the professional racing circuit there? Uh, no, I wouldn't say more so than the others. You know. Being a cycling journalist and being within this world for a long time, and uh, we're here at the San Juan, we're in the same hotel as the top teams, and so you're, you're seeing all these guys all the time. I, I saw Ilio uh, yesterday when all the other riders were at the stage. He was around here at the hotel, and I said hi to him. Um, we didn't talk more than that. But uh, so you, you see all these guys up close, and, um, and there's a lot of things that just goes unreported. Um, so there's you know a few bad boys in, in the uh, peloton, and um, these are these are young guys from 19 up to 40 years old. Well, and uh, but you know a lot of the majority are, are under 30 years old. So they're young young guys, and they have to be reminded to uh, you know act act like men and represent the the sponsors on the jersey and just be good citizens in general. Do you feel like the outrage um, over his comments, sort of the pushback and the media attention that's been brought to this at a whole, I mean, is there a positive takeaway that uh, will prevent future incidents like this uh, moving forward? Yeah, I think there is. I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's a bad thing for the team, but then you got a young guy like 19-year-old Remco Evanpool who's, who's sharing a room with Ev, Ev, uh, Ilio Kiss, and uh, he's living through this experience. It'll be something that'll be in his mind, you know, and it's a reminder to these guys, look, they have to, they have to act like uh, professional athletes and represent those sponsors correctly. Nobody in this situation, I think, is feeling sorry for the alpha male, for the professional no. athlete, you know, that they're uh, yeah. be, be being mistreated. And they kind of need to be reminded that, look, you know, they're not untouchable, untouchable, that they have rules that they have to follow, just like you and I, and uh, you can't go around doing things like this. In fact, they have to kind of set a higher standard because uh, they're out in the public eye and, and they're being paid a lot of money to do what they do. Um, is the sport sexist? Um, Kinda, yeah. You know, women's the women's side of the sport lags way behind the UCI. The governing body is trying to do a lot to to get to get it up to speed. Um, like you mentioned, with equal prize money and some of their races and things, um, we have a lot of years until you know it gets balanced and, and we're there. And also in society as well, uh, just the mentality of, of, of certain people. So uh, we have some years to go until everything's on the right track. Hopefully we'll have uh, smooth sailing and uh, this will you know, be a lesson moving forward for the rest <laughs> of the season and uh, the, I guess the rest, of, hopefully the rest of uh, pro cycling. Yeah, yeah. Forward. Thank you, Ian. Thank you.